Trying this again. I, I crashed my stream. Something happened. We back. I guess I'm just doing this as part two, unfortunately. It's a little frustrating. I wanted to reconnect, but I am brand new to this. So I appreciate your patience if you're watching this on demand. Nobody in the chat right now. That's okay. Allow me to post real quick. I think this is how all streams start. Just like a bunch of nothing. Just a bunch of, hey, let me, let me put this on my social. I'm streaming on YouTube. That's what it says. It's creative. Okay, back to it. What's up, Rafa? How you doing, man? I knew I could count on you. When are you going to stream, man? Come on. It's your turn. I'm forging the path ahead. I expect you to take the next step. I just realized you didn't have a, another eyebrow. <clears throat> see, so I'm just going to do this little red. Oh, that's not red. Why did I do that? Yeah, you do. So I'm, I'm intentionally filling things in perfectly just for the sake of uh, visual interest. Again, like if I, you know, I could trace everything really carefully, but like, where's the fun of that? It's boring. Yeah, Rafa, I'm using, um, oh, I don't know how you do this from iPad only. That's a tricky question. I'm doing um, Streamlabs and Reflector. There might be another way to do that with just Streamlabs, though. I'd be curious. I'm not sure. I don't know enough about this stuff yet. <clears throat> so I've kind of reached the point where I'm ready to flatten a lot of the stuff, because, like, you know, what layer is this artifact on, you know, like, how do I fix that here? Like, you know, how do I, uh, yeah, I can't really show you, but like, I, I want to start blending stuff together so that I can just kind of just sort of start, uh, detailing, start layering. So I'm just going to flatten everything, but the local color, I think. There you go. Usually I'd make a backup, but I don't really care. So at this point I'm just I'm using one of my smudge grainies. There's really nobody else in the chat, huh? We lost everybody. I alienated everybody. <laughs> it's okay. Everybody's dead to me. It's fine. So that's the kind of stuff that, like, it's just easier to blend all that together. Then I can always come back and layer more intentionally. Let's do this. 
I've got some hair in places. A little local color. And then also on different layers, it's like, you know, how do you fix that stuff? It's super annoying. But that's the sketch. Maybe it's just time to turn that on. Yeah, it's great. But yeah, I'd rather have just like kind of a good clean under painting to work with. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just want something that's not like full of artifacts and in fact that's too bright over here. What's going on there? Really all I want from the, all those under layers is just for, for the layers to kind of do some of the math for me. Make sure you watch part one, by the way, if anybody's coming to this totally clean. But I just flatten stuff because all I really want at this stage is some of that like local color and lighting to sort of just merge. And then I'll just take it from there. I can pick my colors after that. Like I said, I'd rather it be like too soft and I can always sharpen up edges. Edges are the easy part, kind of. Ed edges are also like the place where you can get the most interesting artifacts. So like if, if you kind of just like over clean your edges like in a digital style, you're just like getting rid of all the cool stuff. So I'm not over cleaning. June! June! Henry! June, I need you to make some emotes for me if I ever do, uh, do Twitch. <clears throat> I'll try it. I, my, my stream crashed or something, disconnected or whatever earlier. So I'm trying to pick this up on part two. I don't know. Right, so I'm going to make a new layer. So I'm just going to treat that like it's flattened and start to clean this thing up. But if you're just popping in, this is where we're at. So it's um, kind of like manga inspired inks, I guess. Sort of, kind of. Um, and some watercolor and gouache underpainting. Just to like, I'm probably not going to take it way farther than this, honestly. I want it to be a little bit pulpy manga something or other. But I, you know, I want to have fun with it still. I see everybody doing these like awesome ones, but this is just a cool down. I'm not that serious about this. It's still fun though. I like it. <clears throat> Let's see. I want to get some of that eyelash detail in there because I think that'll look nice. I'm not going to go full black. I'm going to go kind of dark. What do I want? Probably warm. I'm going to use my glow flat. Whoa. <laughs> Sanjay, yeah, YouTube Max, new and improved. I'm gonna let. I like this sort of like no edge thing on the eyelashes. I have no idea why I'm doing this. By the way, it just seems interesting and powerful. Um, sort of like there's just a little bit of glow, but I just I don't know where I got this. I just started doing it. And I was like, yeah, it's not stupid. I mean, maybe it's stupid, but I'm doing it anyway. Sometimes you just try stuff. That's what's fun about sketches, man. I, I I don't always take risks and like do unexpected strange things with my stuff that I have a lot at stake for, you know, like big developed illustrations and I'll sort of um, not play it safe. I don't want to play it safe, but you know, it's 
it's like you got so many variables in play the last thing you want to do is just like confuse yourself halfway through and go oh it didn't work and then you know look at this mess you've got and you're like how do you fix this so i don't tend to like do the really silly big risky stuff there so that's why it's fun to do sketches like this where i can just sort of like what if there's no inner highlight or no inner line to the to the eyelashes Nobody cares about this stuff as much as I do. But <laughs> I'm just really talking to myself. I'm trying to convince myself that it wasn't a stupid idea. That's what this is. Now I'm so paranoid my stream's going to end without me noticing. So I think it ended for like minutes before I noticed on the last one. Whatever, it happens. So this side, this is the sun side, right? So I'm going to try to wrap some of these warm colors around this cheek. Yeah, that's the color I want. I'm going to try to sample, but adjust. So I'm going to hit, because this is a really transparent color, these watercolors, this is opaque. It's not like a multiply kind of thing. I'm going to go for a really intense color, knowing that it's going to kind of wash out because it's transparent. So I'm just going to lay it in subtly. See that? In fact, I'm probably just going to do a big old warm wash on this side. as I can, just to sort of like wrap the surfaces a bit. Soften that on one of these layers. <laughs> That's why I'm on a new layer, but it's also the perils of working on a new layer. I don't really get to, it's hard to access. That's why I tend to like to flatten. I don't like to jump around into the palettes too much. I'm just warming this, what the hell layer am I on? Oh, that's why. I'm gonna mix some warms into her skin here where the if you're in the shadow yeah that's ugly jeez I am losing it all right time to reestablish the sun here so I'm losing track so I'm gonna not go full brightness I'm gonna go just warm shadow color. I don't mind it bleeding together with the blue. It's kind of nice that it they sort of spill into each other because of course they would influence each other. Um, I'm going to hit this light. I don't mind it fading down on what the brightest brights be near her face, near her eye. So I'm going to take that same color, do this around here. Oops. Probably try to hit some of this warm as if it's like bouncing around. So one of the things I mentioned in the last version of the stream before I got booted, let's see. Um, sorry, just checking the chat. Uh, yeah. That is a good idea to do a demo layer at the top. I should do that. I have been in, I, I was earlier, but I, I was being lazy. Um, and I will do it again. Let's see. Um, yeah, I'm at Netflix currently. Um, I've got another week at Netflix. 
Uh, I've got another, I'm laughing at the Sailor Moon, not Sailor Sun. Um, I've got another week there currently, um, but I'm working on Thelma the Unicorn, um, which I am, which I checked while I had to talk about. <laughs> I was in a podcast and I was like, oh, I can't, I can't, I wouldn't dare, but I, apparently I'm allowed to talk about it. I'm doing character design at, uh, on the, on the show. It's really fun. I'm having a great time, but, uh, sort of involved in like the initial stages, uh, which is super fun. I mean, it's, it's also like the hardest in the best way, right? It, where things are kind of unestablished, which is great, but it also means, um, there's a lot up in the air, but the, the directors have a great vision. So it's been, it's been a, a pleasure to work with them. The story is really cute. It's super charming. All right, so I mentioned in the last one, I have this, like, I'll use this as my demo layer. Um, there's this idea of, like, I want to have this, like, underlight as if it's coming up this direction, like this bounce light. Um, and I want to use this layer here, more or less, um, as, like, the dark plane, and then I'll kind of hit the lighter plane under that. So it's... Um, It'll help highlight her eyes, just give her a little kind of like a, almost like a raccoon mask kind of idea, you know, just like carve out that shape. I'm not going to go too crazy with that, but it, it'll help just sort of define some planes without uh, being really uh, deliberate about it. I just realized I have my screen way dark. <laughs> I could barely see what I was doing. Um, <clears throat> okay. So... back to this layer. So I, w I want to establish that that purple. I'm going to get a little bit more of a saturated version of it. Slightly darker version. Hmm. I'll try this. Pretty intense, but I think I like that just for the contrast. I'll fade it out over here. I'm not going to use it all the way across, but I like. Uh, that looks like a bruise on that side. All right, this might be a mistake. <laughs> I'm going to try to fade it out, but I might back this off. It's probably a bit too much. So I'm using Smudge Flow to uh, to blend the stuff out. Oh, good idea for the eyedropper. Hey, you can see the things I'm pointing at. That's cool. That's a good idea. Um, so yeah, I could do this. Um, all right, that's cool. I like that. Thank you for the tip. You guys, you must watch a lot of streams because I don't actually I don't usually watch a lot of streams I've been watching more lately as I've thought about doing it but it's still not really my my usual thing I'm gonna use this purple on the headband just because I like it so I'm gonna like just darken it so that the the moon pops a bit better. Do some warms around it. Eh, it's not terrible. So I'm going to pull some of these purples in elsewhere because I'm starting to like that. So I'm going to define her cheekbone a little bit better. Sort of clavicle. Start to like drop that in the more obvious, oops, obvious places. So that's like underneath her short sleeve. Just like once you kind of find a new color you like, it's nice to like spread it around and um, make sure it's not isolated. So I'm really just kind of dropping it down and then mixing on the page with the blenders, it seems. I'm 
need some on her neck. Let's see. I'll probably push this a bit more red. But I'm going to establish it and then mix it to it. Um, I'll use more red here because she would be getting more of this bounce light, but also like reflected off of her chin. Like from the sun here, it would bounce down in there, which is nice. So I'm probably just trying to mix it. I'm not being all that precious with it, I'm just really doing a lot with the blender here. Actually, as long as I'm talking about that, let me show you a trick. Oops. A little over aggressive here. Um, Yeah, so this is um, this is the watercolor pack. I'm also using uh, a brush, or was earlier, um, some not yet released gouache brushes, but um, it's mostly a watercolor flow. Uh, these are kind of my go-to. So I'm working with it sort of opaque. Um, I've also got a gouache update, which is based on the watercolor flows that will um, that will be coming this summer probably. Uh, it'll be a free update. Where was I? Lost my train of thought. Uh, oh, neck. Oh, I was going to show a trick. What was I showing? Oh, my God. I just noticed I'm missing stripes, so I'm going to do that before I forget. I think I colored this wrong. So this is the local color layer. I'm going to see this is the danger of not saving your color palettes because it's transparent, so you can never like reselect something. So forgive me, I'm gonna duplicate this for a second, bring it to the top, set it to normal. This is the stupid crap I get myself into. Take the opacity back up, duplicate it again. All right, now I can sample that blue <laughs> and then just paint it back down here. So that was a huge waste of time. But I just realized I had her cape bib thing inverted over here. Yeah, trick isn't, I haven't done the trick yet. Um, in fact, I'm not sure if I know what I was going to show you. If I think about it, I'll show it to you. Um, what was it? I'm going to use a color for that. I like to do highlights usually on the cool side, so not too bright. Okay. It's not awful. Um, what was I talking about when I was getting onto the trick stuff? I think I was jumping around a lot at the moment. Um, what's up, Skull Bash? Anyway, thanks guys for joining me. This is fun. I, this is only my like second time streaming on my own channel, so this is uh, this is exciting. Glad you're here. Um, what did I do to my? How are my colors all so weird on my? Local color here. Well, I'm, I'm just going to go over it with opaque paint because I'm losing track of my, my layers. Um, let's see. I was going to show you a trick, and I wish I could remember what it was going to be. It's okay. Must not have been that good. I was painting her neck. I was, wasn't I? You know what? Hopefully I'll get into it and remember that. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. It's so hard to juggle painting and talking at the same time. I apologize. This is, uh, I'll get better at this. Well, I hope I'll get better at this. I'm going to mix some of this purple back into her as she gets lower. So I just want to fade stuff out so it doesn't get quite so much attention. Established. What the hell is going on here? 
you guys were at? Why are you being so weird? Oh, I think I just noticed something I want to fix on my brushes. <laughs> that's fine. Probably not. I probably won't fix it here, but that's my own fault. It's a little, not a glitch, but it's it's a behavior that I had on that I'm not sure I would have used otherwise. Uh, I'm going to establish some more purples around her eyes here. Just to give you give her a little bit of depth right where you need it. Just a little bit of like contrast. So that her eyes, you know, the punchiest part of her. <clears throat> I'm gonna sample this sky color too and mix a bit in there too, because it's nice and saturated. Oh, that was the trick. I remember the trick. The trick coming up. Okay. It's not really like a secret. If you have the brushes, um, then you have this. It's in the PDF. Um, I'm going to make an overlay layer uh, because I'm, I'm blending a ton. So you can see it's getting pretty flat. There's not a lot of grain to it anymore. You can see in her eye, that's just paint. There's no blending here. So you get a lot of that like paper texture that I like, um, but you know the more you blend out, the the flatter it gets, the more slightly digital it looks. So I want to make a new layer and call it overlay. So I don't always use this, but it's nice to use when I um, start to just like really blend stuff like crazy. So um, I'm gonna come down to the bottom. These are all sort of fair game. So I'm going to use the overlay brushes because they are built for overlays. You could also use the fill. They're kind of the same, um, but they apply differently. So the overlays, I'll show you. Um, this is the overlay grainy, and it's sort of like an airbrush. It's like a patchy airbrush, so you can use it more selectively. Um, you can also use it on its own. Uh, the fill, The fill brushes are meant to not really have a lot of subtlety to them. So they're meant to just really establish a whole even layer so here i'll show you so like if i do the overlay grainy it's harder to do a completely even layer you can but it's kind of easy to let it be uneven too um so here with the fill grainy it just goes on without thinking about it and it goes on at levels that work well with the blend modes so if i set it to soft light you can see my paper textures back it's too strong, of course. <laughs> it's way too strong. But if I start to mix up, I'm just going to mix it in until it feels sort of like subliminally there. I'm not trying to make a huge deal out of this. I just want a little bit of grain. That's all. That's enough. And now all of a sudden it looks just a little bit more even. You know? And you can always you know, punch it up more. You can also do things that are more um, localized. So if you just wanted to use it in certain areas, you could. What I would probably do in that case is uh, mask this. So you could mask and then invert the mask and then paint white wherever you want to reveal it. But I'm not going to do that here. So if you know if you'd over blended like just her face, for example, if you don't want to do it everywhere, you can you know do it that way. I think this is too strong. Cool tricks, tricks, tricks. Uh, Agnes, it should be possible to rewatch this. I think I'm, um, I, I streamed earlier and crashed and found the stream. So I think it should be possible <clears throat> to, um, to rewatch on demand. I'm still not entirely clear if it's, if I have to do it, like if it, it seems like it's by default only easily acceptable be, to people who are already watching. Um, but I'll make sure to put it up make sure it's available to everybody. I'm not trying to make this exclusive or anything like that. So, all right, let me show you another trick because I'm starting to, it's not done by any means, but I wanna, this is a good point to establish, or just kind of sharpen my color palette. 
<clears throat> so I'll show you the, the heavy version of this, just because it's easier to show on a stream, but I'll, I'll moderate this. So I'm going to do something that I like to think of as kind of like a color grading um, or like a filter. Like you can think of it as an Instagram filter kind of thing. I'm going to fill a color, usually with like a light warm color. This is really extreme, by the way. Don't do what I'm doing. Um, it tends to be full um, chroma, by the way, when I do this. It doesn't have to be, but I suppose that's just up to you. I'm going to set this to either multiply or color burn. They each other benefits. Um, sometimes I'll do linear burn. It really depends on what mood I'm in and, and um, what the color palette needs. Uh, I'm going to let this be ugly for a second while I make a new layer. I'm going to use kind of like a bluey purple, kind of the complement of it, uh, and very dark, very saturated. And set that to screen. And I don't really use other modes. I usually just use screen. I suppose you could probably use color dodge, but it doesn't really behave the way I want. Um, and all of a sudden, it has a bit of a treatment to it. This is obviously extreme, like I said. So I'm going to set these down. I'm, 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 uh, I'm showing it to you that way, just so it's a little bit more uh, easy to see. I'm going to mix this up. Probably about 20% is decent. If, if you're really establishing color for the first time and you just don't know what the hell you want, you can go as hard as you want. Um, I don't hate that. So all of a sudden, here, let me put this in a group so you can see um, before and after. And it just gives you a little bit of... Uh, it kind of just brings the colors together without you having to do too much. I'll work with this off as long as I'm sampling colors, but um, that way, because like in Photoshop, I would do adjustment layers and turn things on and off and whatever. Um, you don't have that in, in Procreate. I don't see that as a bad thing either. It's just just the reality of the way Procreate is. So um, I'm going to leave that on as much as I want to, and then turn it off when it gets in the way, like if I'm sampling color. Because if I were to sample color now, it's sampling the combined color, which I don't want, because now I've got this overlay. Actually, I'll put this in the group. So now my overlay is in there too, so you can see my texture turns on with this. This is nice so that like it's not sampling the grain color and getting brighter, darker as I sample. All right, so it is time to fully flatten these layers underneath, I think. So pray for me. There it is. I'm totally going to regret that. Actually, let me pull out the background before I do that. Oh, it's already there. <laughs> All right, well, whatever. Um, it was pretty imprecise anyway. So, but yeah, it's a good way to bring your color palette just a little bit more. Um, I don't know, it just gives it a bit more consistency. I, sometimes I'll do it a few times over the process, flatten it, then work into it, and flatten it, work into it. It works really well when you're doing sunlit stuff, um, just to you know get some of that warmth back into your, to your highlights. Because if you look at it, it's pretty cold, actually. Like It's a little bit just, I don't know, it's missing something. So I'm going to turn it off, but I'll, I'll turn it on when I'm done. You can also, uh, sometimes I'll flip the warm and cool. I'll, I'll do cool in the highlight and warm in the shadow, and it just gives you a different vibe. It's all valid, whatever you want to do. All right, so now that I've got all this flattened and you can see what it looks like, it's not bad, but it's just a little bit, um, a little patchy in some spots. I'm just going to clean up some stuff that's around her face because it's it's her face and I need for that to be cleaner. I'm not trying to over, I'm not trying to get, trying to get rid of all facets. Um, in fact, I like, oops wrong brush. Um, I like facets. Facets are my friend. Um, on faces even. Like I know the rules are typically to avoid facets, especially on female faces, especially on young faces, but I think it's still worthwhile to have just a little, you just need an anchor. You need some kind of texture. Otherwise you're working with nothing, right? So um, I'll pull some of these warms back around her eyes. Like it over blended something out around here. I feel like I'm going a little bit fast for the sake of the stream. 
It's also just a sketch. I'm not too serious about this. I was watching, I've been, like I said, I've been watching streams a bit more. And, uh, oops. Um, in preparation to stream for myself. And, uh, I swear to God, every other stream on Twitch is this challenge right now. It's cracking me up. I can't think of the last time I saw a challenge reach this level of saturation like this. It's really unusual. It's so funny. It's kind of a fun one, too. I mean, the character is so iconic. It's it's hard to... It's easy to see why this would be the, the popular one, but it is kind of amazing. I, you know, I, Agnes, I, <laughs> I'm self-conscious about like belittling my stuff, and it's not out of a sense of like, um, I, I've never wanted to be that guy who like craps on his own work, and you know, I don't want people to feel uh, self-conscious about their own work by the way I see mine. It, this is just sort of like you can see my my edges are kind of loose, and and I'm not really taking things too seriously. Um, this is not a piece that's going to like be a portfolio piece, but I'm having fun with it. And so I'm just kind of letting myself do unusual things and it's working out pretty well. I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm not trying to say like, I'm not trying to say it's bad. It's, it's I'm not being very careful though. That's for sure. You can see it like all over this place. I'm, it's just a mess of bad transitions. <laughs> if I was really careful about it, I'd be planning my highlights better. Actually, screw it. Let's, <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Let's just do that. So uh, I want to pick out some highlights. We've got this hard backlight, so I want to pick out some backlight. I'm going to do it on a new layer just so I can erase and back it out if, I, if I'm not happy. So I'm going to pick a shape out. I'm sort of being a little bit random here. Yikes. Um, <clears throat> so I want to make sure this hits the foreground a little bit. That would be like kind of a backlit version of her hair, right? This is really saturated just to pull up that rich highlight. So I'm going to put it over here a little bit because that's also back there. Apply it back here. I smudge out the edges, so I'm going to leave some of the hard edges and then soften some of those out. And then I'll do it back here. Um, hair usually has a really saturated side to the highlight and then a less saturated, more like white highlight. Um, so I'm going to do something like that. Facets. Um, <clears throat> facets are like pl uh, geometric planes, I guess. Um, like think planes of the face or, or, or um, help me out. Uh, fat, yeah, like think, think kind of like, um, polygonal geometry it's basically just like the way a, a here i guess i can draw it i'm gesturing in my room and you can't see that unless you're watching me in which case that's creepy but um so like the the planes like for example on the face planes of the face right implicitly they're sort of like plane changes Right, so these would be kind of facets. I'm making it look very geometric, of course, for the sake of the argument, but the um, that's what I'm trying to do here. So I'm trying to like change the plane as if it's as if the hair has a little bit of depth to it, you know. <laughs> um, I'm not being super careful about it, like I said, but it, it's close enough for me to to say, ah, it's, it's good enough for me. Does that help?
Uh, yes, my Twitch username is Max Ulichini. I don't know if I'll be streaming on Twitch necessarily. I think currently I'm focused on YouTube because uh, it makes sense for me to grow whoop, one thing at a time. Um, and I think it makes, I think tonally YouTube is a better fit for me anyway. Um, nothing wrong with Twitch. I don't know that it's, um, I just don't want to be juggling two social media accounts, like two brand new ones. Okay, so I think one of the things I can do here that really needs help is this background is sort of competing a little bit. It's sort of the wrong value. It's not really helping me. I'm going to try something. under the lines. I'm going to I want to go light blue. It seems boring. Warm wouldn't be a bad idea. I'm using the blue cuz that's within what's in the um what's in the original reference, but at some point I'm not really doing the original thing anyway, so I don't mind trying something different. I don't really know what I want to do for this. I want to try to Let's try. I'm just going to paint this and not worry about the color. It is on a layer, so what I can do is adjust it after the fact, if I feel like I want to. I know I said it earlier, but I appreciate you guys hanging out with me tonight. This is fun. I like this flow flat. I think this is this is my go-to brush from this pack. Um, I like chisel shaped brushes, generally speaking, just because I, I think it gives you a huge variety of marks without having to change your brush too much. Uh, and the flow brushes are just very intuitive. And they just feel really controlled. It is 11.30 for me, so I'll probably only be doing this for another 30 minutes tops. To be honest, I'm starting to get a little bit tired. Trying to do this in one stroke. Nope. I picked my brush too small. I always like to use the biggest brush I'm able to. Pull off. I, I'd rather work on a new layer and erase what I didn't want. Or clean up an edge elsewhere. Okay, so that helps a little bit. just gives it a little bit more value. And I think I'm going to try something. Because this is... Uh, I might be getting myself into trouble. I'm going to duplicate my background. So it just makes it more opaque. Can you see that? It's fine. Um, I feel like she needs a bit more depth, as if she's more in a deeper shadow, a bit more drama. So I'm going to, I'm not sure how this is going to go. I'm going to pick like a light purple, fill the layer, and then multiply. This is under the background. The background layer is actually on top of my colors, because I'm crazy like that. Soften the edge just a touch. So I'm just smudging out the the what sky background, whatever you call this. It's like it's not really a sky. So I know she looks very purple. I'm gonna erase out where I want the sun. I kind of like where that's going. I'm gonna try to play with hue and saturation on this background because I am not convinced that. <laughs> I don't need that. <laughs> I'm not convinced that blue is the right move. I don't know. Warm might fight a bit too much. I don't mind that. I'm going to try something stupid. Art. I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to make one very orange underneath. 
very saturated. Let's see. I'm going to do this again. Because it kind of like bakes the saturation down. Um, and then we're going to put the one back on top. So what you see now is stuff peeking through. See when I turn it off and on, it just sort of gets, gives it a little bit of a glow. It's subtle, but it helps a bit. I don't mind that glow, that white background, or almost white background now. Eight thirty in the morning for you. Where are you? So what I was going to do, and I got sidetracked with the background, <clears throat> I like to establish my background values pretty early, because then it helps inform my choices for the other stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to make a mask on the, this is the shadow layer. My layer setup looks really weird. This is actually not uncommon for me to work this way. Um, it's maybe a little bit less normal, but it's, uh, it's not too crazy. So I'm going to paint my mask. I'm going to use my flow brushes again. No, I'm going to use my gouache update brushes because they're like a more opaque version of the same brushes. And then I'm going to carve out where I want to reestablish my lights. So mostly along her, her chin or her uh, face. Just gonna kind of scribble that. Something about the colors aren't quite working for me there. I'm gonna have to come back and play with some of this skin color. Oh, actually, it will look looking a little bit uncontrolled, but check this out. I forgot I have this. It's not too bad. <laughs> Jenny. <laughs> I appreciate that very much. That's funny. I really should have Apple stock at this point. Honestly, I don't hate this in its current form. So let me see. Um, I'm going to. I'm sort of losing a little bit of control on some of these, some of my lighting. Um, ah, stop it. Like this is, when I have too many layers, things just get a little bit muddy. You can see like stuff like this, it's just like what, you know, where the hell is my light there? Um, for the sake of like a watercolor look though, it's, it's not unconvincing. I don't think it's bad. It's just, it's like, where's my priority? Let's try something. I'm gonna make a new layer, make it kind of reddish, orange. Um, I'm gonna set it to add. I'm gonna fill this. We're gonna mask it. We're gonna let this be our sun. This might be a mistake. <laughs> I'm not sure about this uh, mask, right? I'm gonna invert the mask. I'm gonna paint white to reveal it. We're gonna try to get some glow out of this. By the way, this is on top of the everything, basically. Uh, this is on top of the lines, on top of everything. So this this will cut through a lot of this mud, hopefully. We'll see. I don't like to do too much of this. This is one of those tricks that like you can definitely take too far, because um, it starts to look very digital. It's a, it's a 
trick that's really common digitally. You don't really ever see this traditionally. There's ways you can sort of hack something kind of like this, but it's really, uh, this is a digital trick for sure. It's not a bad one to use, like, but if you're trying to make it look like watercolor or something, it's, you have to use it sparingly or, or paint back on top of it after. Um, you just want to be careful. Add, let me show you the difference between add and screen. Screen just looks a little bit airbrushed. Add looks like sun. Color dodge is always too acidic for me. Let me back this off just a touch. happens if I kind of really show, show off the light source. Of course, you want to make sure that the, uh, the brightest parts are near her face and stuff, or the focal point. But, you know, sometimes it's really more about contrast than it is just brightness and darkness. letting some of those marks stay how they are. Uh, I'm going to come back down. I'm going to turn off all these weird layers. I want to reestablish the, the lighting on her shoulder there, kind of on the bib thing. Not being too careful about this. I'm just going to let it be a little bit smudgy. Maybe mix in some color. If this is like a white shirt smock thing, then I want to make sure it has a bit of her chin color in it. And I want to get some darker darks for her bib. I'm gonna do this on another layer in case I need to moderate it later. Let's see. It is really weird sitting in silence like this, by the way. I'll figure out a music solution for the next one. I, I just wanted to see if this was even feasible on a with no warning. It is a little bit strange, but hey, you can always listen to your own music, and I don't get copyright strikes that way. So I think like establishing these stripes. This is kind of an iconic outfit. I don't want to skimp on this too much. I know I'm painting purple, but it's just in the palette now, so it is what it is. I like that little kick up. Gives me an excuse to put some, some contrast back into it. I'm going to hit the bright, almost bright whites. Let's see. I'm going to let that be messy. It sort of falls to the background if you let it be messy. What am I drawing? This is the Sailor Moon <clears throat> Zeitgeist Challenge. <laughs> Everybody's doing it. Everybody's doing it. I feel like there's like some implicit threat that if you don't, something bad will happen to you. It's like the ring or something. I like this red. This is kind of a major part of her color palette, so I'm just dropping a couple little colors of it here and there. See these little, if you give it like a nice little light touch with, with uh, 
blower brushes, it'll just make these little hatchy marks that I like. So I'm trying to use them sparingly. But it's nice, in, especially in shadow colors, I think, to mix up the highlight, or to mix up the, uh, the, the hues. I'm just kind of throwing it wherever it feels like it wants to be. Oh, that sounded very Bob Ross, didn't it? Just wherever it wants to be. So in this case, so check this out. So I'm, I want to match that value. Um, I used to, there used to be a better way to do this. I, I have to kind of eyeball it now, unfortunately, but I'm just going to try to make a more saturated version of that. It's the same color. Which is more intense. Um, I don't know. Pull that red back into her nose, I think. If you kind of make it nice and saturated, it feels like bounce light. It's maybe a bit much. All right, let's turn on our, our effects again. So we've got, oops, wrong thing. We've got our sun. Need a sparkle on her eye. Let's see if I can do that with this. <laughs> Agnes, <clears throat> I feel ya. I heard someone mention some other brushes in the stream, and I'm about to jump through the stream. I'm just joking. We love all brushes here. Anything that gets people drawn. I think mine are the best, but it's okay. I'm obviously biased. <clears throat> I needed a good base for that color, but I, I feel like I'm still... See, okay, this is a good time to talk about this. See how you can't just put <clears throat> white on a thing, because it looks kind of um, dull. It doesn't really look all that... It doesn't look like there's light coming through this. So you need some colors around it, some of that bleed to make it feel brighter. Because the, um, <clears throat> like if I just put the same color here that looks really hot in the background, it just looks desaturated. It's missing intensity. So I'm going to surround it with other color that is much more saturated. And that way, there's just a little something that's helping it. <clears throat> Also, simultaneous contrast is your friend. So if I do something in the same value, but like a complementary color, gives that <clears throat> excuse me gives give you that um, highlight with just a bit more intensity. It just feels like it's reflecting something real. Oh, and actually, I should probably paint some of this shirt color into her eyes just to pull the palette through because in the anime her eyes are the same color as her bib I keep saying bib it's probably not a bib I don't know what you call it <clears throat> so now you see with a base on her eye or you know here it looks much more saturated with all the stuff that we put on top um this might be as far as I'm going to take this background. I just flattened my background to something else. Well, 
<laughs> it happens. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna. I need some haze, so I'm gonna make a haze layer. I'm gonna set this to screen. I think. Let's see how this goes. Um, I'm gonna do the same way I did the one underneath that. So I'm gonna mask and invert the mask. Now I need a big, stupid, soft brush. What do I want to use? Um, shouldn't be able to tell the difference. I'm going to use a grain cloud here. And a gouache pack. There you go. A little glow, a little atmosphere. Goes a long way. <clears throat> so now I'm going to pick a normal brush. Probably stay with the flow flat. I'm going to pick out where I don't want it, which is only in this case. I'm just going to piece out her hair here. I want the ponytail to recede a bit. So I'm going to hold it out from the foreground and let it be present in the background. And you see how that just kind of like lets that fall back as if there's like a, just a layer. I'm going to do that here too. I'm going to do it less because I like what it's doing here, but I want this ponytail in the background to fall back a bit more. I'm just going to soften that way out. I just want that, that layer right there. I don't want you to really see where it stops and starts. Actually, the better way to do that, I'm just going to backlight it also. Oops. I'm going to do toothy, liner toothy black. I'm gonna, oops, yeah, I'm going to. Just give me a couple flyaways. It always helps. Uh, might look a little digital. Too much of a good thing. <clears throat> it's not bad. I don't mind. So I'm going to just highlight my eyelashes just a little bit because I've got this brush out. I might as well. I mean, you gotta have fun with the highlights, right? Come on, Sailor Moon. Uh, this might be all she wrote. Let me just take a look at some of these colors real fast. I might adjust the levels. Feels maybe just a bit warm overall, so I'm gonna pull up the cools. <laughs> it's not bad. It's not bad. For sort of just a screw around piece came up pretty good i like the inks on it happy with the inks all right guys um any questions before i log off this is fun thank you for joining me i'm glad it didn't crash this time so far thoughts hope you guys are doing well i appreciate you hanging out um stay safe be healthy make art um I'm going to leave it there. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it so much. Bye-bye.